So I'll start. I just a question to both of you. Um, obviously, we're here to talk about drink water. Um, so what are, I know, one or two of your favorite coming of age films? Oh, that's a tough question already. Um, Daniel, why don't you go first? <laughs> um, coming of age films. That's a good question. Um, I think um, High Fidelity is kind of a coming of age movie, even though it's not about a teen. It's like, a, it's, you know, it's about like a 20 or 30 something coming of age. Um, and I love that movie. Um, a teen coming of age? It doesn't have to be. Yeah, I don't I know. Think, I think High Fidelity is a perfect one. I think, I think unfortunately, the reason needs to step up <laughs> and tell us what, what she's got. Yeah. Do you do you all know a movie called Max Cables? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> okay, cool. Um, it's like kind of it's a family movie that was probably on like a, the Family Channel or something like that growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, but it it's it actually kind of has some similarities to Drinkwater. I would say like the best friend is kind of in the shadows, and then she's like, "I love you," and he's like, "I don't know," and you know, like that thing and that was probably a, a coming of age movie that i enjoyed watching a lot okay okay right so getting in drink water itself max um, cables mm -hmm. yeah max cables i got to look that up afterwards but yeah the um, drink water itself uh one of the things of you notice about mike is that obviously he's, he's, that's his that's a town that he's been in his whole life it doesn't seem to have any sort of friends outside of Watts before she comes there, which I thought was interesting, just because given how strong of a character he is, I think even in a small town like that, someone like that sort of pulls people into their orbit if they don't want to be. So my question to you guys is, do you think you would have been friends with Mike if you oh. met him when you were a teenager? Hmm, that's a good question. I think if like we had gotten the chance to be friends, then yeah, I think so. But I think you're right. Like I think the thing about Mike is that he's he's kind of a loner, so I don't think he'd be on anybody's radar really. I think he's kind of one of those kids in high school that doesn't have any friends because you know he's kind of on the outskirts of every like he's not really in any clubs or societies or anything, and he spends time alone and. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of depends. I mean, I was friends with lots of kids like that, but I because, you know, they were in like film class with me. So it all depends on what kind of yeah. circles, yeah, circles he would run in. Yeah, I feel like Mike would be too smart for me. I would probably try to be friends with him, and then he would talk about something really smart, and I'd be like, I, I don't understand. I could see that. I could see that. Okay, so, um, for drink water, what? Um, what do you think you learned from this particular production that you did, that you know that is new to you or resonated with you? Uh, I probably learned a lot more about the camera work actually, just because of who was in the crew with us. Um, specifically, our director Stephen Campanelli. He's been a camera operator for Clint Eastwood for thirty plus years now, and the way he was directing us and directing the crew um it was quite quite in inspiring to watch to be honest um so i learned a lot more of like the camera angles and how to help tell a story even more clear with with the camera not just the acting side okay and how about you daniel yeah i mean at the time i wasn't thinking about learning anything because we shot the movie and like 15 or 16 days and I was there every day. So I was just trying to get through it as best <laughs> as I could. Um, but in hindsight, I think kind of similar to Louise's answer. I, I think one of the things I kind of learned is that, the, you know, film is totally a team game and everybody has to do their part. Um, so uh, like we wouldn't be able to make it without the whole crew and without Louisa supporting me and, it's definitely a team effort. That's one of the things I look back on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So leading on from that, uh, both of you have had pretty, 
and impressive careers so far. But if for whatever reason, or if you had a, if you had a choice, you had to, and you weren't acted, but you were still um, in the entertainment game, what mm. crew position would you like to be, or what do you think you would be if you were an actor? I I actually think about this question a lot, just on my own time, um, just because there's so many interesting jobs in the film industry. Like there's a job for literally every single thing um, you could think of. Um, I think I would have a lot of fun with costumes. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know, probably because I come from theater and from a dance background that costumes was just always sort of its own character in those um, in those industries. And I guess the same thing as for a film, I'm always looking at the costumes when I watch something and it's just fun. So <laughs> I like fun things. Um, I'll go with crafty, whipping up oh. food for the crew, making mac and cheese, making burgers. Okay, so what's your, what's your go-to dish then if, you, if you're making it for us? Oh man, like a big dish. I'd probably make a lot of Italian food. I make a lot of pasta because that's going to work for a lot of people. But you know, I'd want to switch it up. Daniel's actually Talk a very good cook. He's a very good cook. Talk about that. Okay. I still haven't had any any of your um, Filipino food though, Louisa. You still got to cook for I know. me. I know. You got to invite me for you a manjo night. And then you get Filipino food. That's good. Um... So the thing I really liked um, uh, while watching Drink Water is that while it obviously it's very clear about holding, um, taking inspiration from 80s style coming of age films, one thing it does, it treats um, all the characters much more than just a simple um, role. So often when you get those copy of age films, it's always a hero and he will win over everyone else. And the villain is just a villain irredeemable and he's just there to be a bully but like i very much like the growth that happens to all the characters including um our sort of two antagonists the father and son um i think i think even at the beginning we do a very good um um do a very good of showing why the father is as intense as he is with his son and so i just um, no, that's one. That's something that sort of appealed to me about drink water. What was it that appealed to you um, at the beginning when you were deciding whether not to get involved in the project? Um, yeah, I mean, I just liked the freedom that the movie uh, kind of presented, um, the ability for the character to, you know, kind of move around, kind of say whatever I want and kind of do crazy things. I, I, I liked, uh, I liked that aspect to the movie that I felt like I had a lot of, a lot of room and freedom to work with. Uh, I don't know. I just found it was really funny when I first read the script, I found uh, for whatever reason, I felt like I knew Wallace a lot, uh, even though we're quite, I mean, I feel like every character there's there's something I have to relate to in some way just as part of my job but I just felt like I kind of knew her just the sense of that she wanted to feel small because she was in in a world where she was a fish out of water and she's going through this grieving stage she just didn't I feel like Wallace didn't really come into her own or really show her real self to Mike until or to anyone really even to the grandparents until the very end just because she didn't know how to or didn't want to based on what she was going through. Um, so to me, it was quite interesting of how can I build all of that in such little dialogue compared to some of the other characters, something boiling underneath uh, the surface to me was quite, quite interesting. Okay. Okay, so to both of you, um perhaps more to Diana, what was it like working with Emma Comac? I'm a big fan, especially of Travelers, which, and this is his amazing um, sort of back catalogue of shows and films. So what was it like to work with him? Yeah, Eric's great. Eric's great. You know, there's, 
what's that saying? Don't meet your heroes because they always disappoint. That's not <laughs> the case with Eric. He will not disappoint you. He's really, he's really, really nice, really professional, really funny. Just a pleasure to work with all around. Great, great acting partner, you know, for a guy who's achieved so much and is pretty famous. He he doesn't have a big head or anything at all. Like he's really humble, treats everybody with respect and everybody. Is, yeah, I, I can't say enough. He's awesome. Cool. Did you want to add anything to that, Louisa? Uh, he throws really great karaoke parties. Oh, what was it? Was uh, what did Those what did karaoke. he sing? Um, what did I sing? <laughs> I I asked Daniel his choice of "Listen" by Beyonce or "Since You've Been Gone" by Kelly Clarkson, <laughs> and he was like, "Maybe Beyonce is a lot for this crowd. Let's let's go with the the Kelly Clarkson so people can sing along." And I'm not just belting my heart out in front of people. So I did "Since You've Been Gone." Okay. So, uh, Rudy, you mentioned obviously that your background in theater, which I believe started when you were eight or nine. Was that right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I played a mouse. So, but yeah. Um, so, uh, how old were you when you decided that acting was, was your thing? What's your passion? What's the thing that you're going to make happen? And same question to Daniel. Uh, I guess when I was graduating high school, uh, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. My parents, classic Filipino parents, wanted me to do nursing. And so that was kind of like didn't feel right for me at all. I practically failed chemistry and did very I tried really hard in school, but um I didn't do well uh, in the academic side very, very much, but for everything in the arts side, I was, I felt so free and felt so limitless. And uh, so when I graduated from high school, I just decided that I was going to go to theater school because it just felt right to me, but I didn't really know what like where it would take me I was hoping it would take me to film and tv or you know um somewhere in, in the theater area but I didn't I didn't because you just never know in life and also I didn't really have anybody to show me that path so it was just kind of how I felt in the moment and what felt right for me thank you um yeah for me I mean I guess kind of started in elementary school. Um, it's kind of that feeling of, of, you know, being the person in your class that puts up your hand when nobody else does and you get in front of the class and get to express yourself and be weird. That's a really um, powerful feeling. And I guess I just kind of enjoyed and chased that <laughs> coupled with the fact that I, I just like, can't, I, I was never uh, kind of, um, able to wrap my head around school uh I was never really able to 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 succeed in that kind of straightforward grade um structure of school so it's kind of the kind of the path I had to take because I wasn't going to go to business school or succeed in any sort of thing with numbers really okay well, that's, well um I would like to obviously thank you both for coming on and, and talking to me about Dream Quarter, which is an amazing um, film. And I just, for the final sort of question, this is, it's a question that we ask everyone that we interview here at Hollywood Dorf News, and that is just tell us about um, one um, Canadian TV or film production that we should um, go and watch. Mm. Uh, I I like Kim's Convenience, but mm -hmm. I feel like that's an easy pick. But I, I don't know. Right. Maybe there's people out there that still haven't seen it. Yeah, I'm outside of uh, Canada. It's not as big as it could be, I think. Yeah, yeah Kim's Convenience is, is great. Um, I really like the Canadian Heritage Minutes. Those are all on YouTube. I guess that's not current, but I really like <laughs> those. So. Not, so have, if you haven't no, seen those, check, anything that, anything check that them you all out. Recommend. Okay. Yeah, check them all out. I think I think they're all on YouTube. 
Okay. They're great. Well, I think that well, that's all for me. And thank you again for coming on. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah.